on the floor, catch the camera. There we go. Hi guys, it's Sunday afternoon. We've been out shopping and I bought a pack of wine, or sorry, a, a six pack of wine, six bottles of wine in this cardboard box from Lidl. So it's nice and cheap. And I'm looking at the box and I'm thinking, I haven't made a rubber band powered car for quite a while. I did start a completely separate channel for rubber band powered vehicles and things. Didn't get a lot of views on it, so I've actually stopped putting any more videos on it. It's still there. It's got about 300 videos on it. And I if I finish this, I might add it to that channel, but I think I'll publish this on my main channel anyway. So, cardboard box. I reckon I can make two rubber band powered cars out of it, virtually identical. I want to add as little as possible to it, so I'll try and cut the wheels out of spare bits of cardboard. Uh, I've got some paper straws there, got some bamboo skewers, uh, scissors, sharp knife, super glue. I'm going to use super glue rather than sticky tape or hot glue. Got a couple of rulers, a metal ruler, a wooden ruler. I uh, can't remember what that thing's called. In fact, probably don't need it, but uh, that's there. I've got a compass there with a felt tip pen in it. Another felt tip pen, scissors. I think that's all I'll need. And I intend to make this into two, as I say. I'm looking at it, I've been sitting here looking at it for quite a while. Um, it's already got uh, little indentations on it where you're supposed to be able to rip the box open to get the bottles out easily. So if I go along that line there, that will be the bottom of the chassis. I'll use that bit of a curve and then come round here somewhere for the back of the car, sort of dragster shape. Stick a drinking straw across the back for the axle to go through. On this side, I'm going to have to cut it along there and curve it up and round so it matches that side. We need another drinking straw across the front here for the front axle. And then if I cut that out, I should have identical on the other end, of the other side of the box, so I can make two cars out of it. So that's what I'm going to try and do. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put the camera to watch me, but I probably won't talk much. I might even uh, fast forward it.
I've just given them a very light coat of spray paint so we can tell which one's which. Not that it makes any difference. They're both as close to identical as I could make them. So we now want some rubber bands. These are just cheap ones I got from Poundland a while ago. Now, some people ask me how to join them. So here's two. If you pull the loop through, is that good enough? Uh, how about if we do it with just one loop sticking out? If you push one all the way through the loop, like that, and then push it through its own loop, like that, if you flip that back up, that's exactly the same join as if we'd have done, pull that one up and that one down, that does it, I probably want about three for this I should think, so we've only got a loop here, so up through, push it through itself, flip that back over there, that's three, let's just have a look, oh we could probably do four, people ask me how many rubber bands do you use, well the number is irrelevant, it depends how big your rubber bands are. If they're small rubber bands you'll need more. If they're bigger you need less. If you use too many then it's too long and it slops around and gets it actually gets caught on itself if it's too long. You actually want it to be just a bit too short. Right, if we push that one through that hole that I made I just pushed a hole in the cardboard there, so we've got a loop, push the rest of it through that loop and there we are, tied off. And then at this end you could glue a little bit of the end of your stick, cut it off and glue it on there in a T shape, or you can just put the rubber band over the top wrap it round so it goes underneath, do that again, round so it's underneath and then it holds itself in place. Now if your other bands are too powerful the wheels will spin and then you need to add some weight on the back there to hold it down on the road or you can put uh, what I do is I cut up a rubber, a rubber glove, so it's a nice long strip or ring, donut shape, and stretch that over the outside and that gives you a rubber tyre. Well that worked. Let's see if we can do the other one. Got some already joined together there. It's an odd mixture. That probably means they'll break because they're old ones. Yeah, like that. These rubber bands don't last very long. So we want to join these together. Push one through the other, so you've got a loop, and push the rest through that loop, and there you are. I think these will break, so I think these are ones I've used before and put back in the uh, little jar. Never mind. 
same thing, push that through the hole. So we've got a loop, push the rest of them through that loop, tied off there, at the other end, over the top, underneath so it's holding itself in place. go on the floor catch the camera there we go that actually for those people who like to know distance if it had gone and hit the door at the other end that would have been eight meters so that was about six and a bit meters it did without me winding it up very far Summary time, what have we got? We've got two rubber band powered cars made from one cardboard box that I got six bottles of wine in from Lidl. Uh, we've got four bamboo canes or barbecue skewers for the axles, four paper drinking straws for the axle tubes and we used super glue to glue everything together or crazy glue some people call it tools we needed a sharp knife scissors compass uh, or a pen felt tip pen I think that was it. Oh, and a ruler to measure things with. And that was it. So we got two from one box. Oh, and rubber bands. Obviously, we needed rubber bands. Job done. Thanks for watching. If you like that, then you might like this. And if you like this and that, you might like to subscribe over there.